Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth and final video of a series where I have teamed up with Formula E to talk about electric cars. Now in this video we're going to be discussing a very common question that gets brought up whenever you're talking about electric cars and that is are electric cars actually any better for the environment than a gasoline car? So there's three questions we're going to be answering in this video that I think are very commonly asked. First, doesn't producing electric car batteries produce a lot of emissions with it? Second, don't electric cars get their power from fossil fuels anyways, offsetting any emission benefits of those electric cars. And finally, isn't lithium mining terrible for the environment? Now, this is a highly discussed subject and there's all kinds of information floating around out there. And so I want to start by saying that while yes, I have teamed up with Formula E for this video, who obviously likes electric cars, I'm not going to be using Formula E as a source of information for any of the information about whether or not electric cars are better or worse for the environment than gasoline cars. On top of this, I'm going to provide citations as well as links within the video description for all of the information provided in this video. And I do agree that it's a good idea you know to go out there and look at different videos and that kind of thing I just want to be sure that when you're doing so try to see where that information comes from because many of them out there don't include citations and you don't know whether or not you can actually trust the information provided okay so it's a highly complicated topic but I want to break it down into two main sections that I think get the most attention first emissions and then materials and mining so starting with emissions, we need to answer two questions. How much emissions are produced for vehicle production and how much emissions result from vehicle usage? Based on these two parts of the equation, we can determine which vehicle is better overall for the life of the vehicle. Now, of course, there are emissions related to the vehicle's end of life, getting rid of it once it's no longer useful. However, a study out of Yale University found that end of life emissions for both electric cars and gasoline powered cars is relatively low, very low in comparison to usage and production. So we're not going to be looking at end of life emissions in this video. All right, so the first part of the question is vehicle production, and there's a wide variety of estimates out there as far as the carbon emissions required to produce a vehicle. Now that makes sense because there's a wide variety of vehicles out there. So I looked at about a dozen studies looking at what are the average emissions required to produce the average vehicle. And so I saw a low estimate, a study out of MIT, saying about two metric tons of carbon required to produce a vehicle. And then I saw a cost analysis saying as high as 17 metric tons in order to produce a vehicle. Now, every single study I looked at agreed that electric cars require more CO2 emissions to produce than gasoline powered cars. And this is primarily because of the batteries. So they range from about 15% more emissions to about 70% more emissions. Now, this percentage is based on the size of the battery. So a small Nissan Leaf battery will require about a third of the carbon emissions to produce versus a larger Tesla battery. So it's important when you're buying an electric car that you buy the right size battery for your needs. For the purposes of this video, we're going to give the combustion engine every benefit of the doubt. And so we're going to assume that both of these vehicles require the same baseline of emissions to produce them, assuming you don't include the emissions required for the battery. And this is a safe assumption to make because most studies show that an electric car would actually have less emissions than producing an internal combustion car if it weren't for the battery. Then, so we're gonna start with that common baseline and we will add on top of that the emissions required for producing the battery for just the electric car. From the wide range of estimates out there, let's simply say that it requires 10 metric tons of CO2 emissions to produce a new car. Now, whether or not that's high or low doesn't really matter all that much because we're giving the same number to both cars. Then we add the emissions for battery production. The studies I read showed a range of CO2 emissions for battery production from about one to five tons for a small battery, 30 kilowatt hours like in the previous leaf, to about six to 17.5 tons for a larger battery pack, such as the 100 kilowatt hour pack in a Tesla P100D. So to play it safe, let's go with the higher estimates. So once again, we're giving the internal combustion engine the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so for the production of an average gasoline vehicle, we start with 10 metric tons of carbon emissions. For an electric car with a small 30 kilowatt hour battery pack, we have 10 tons of carbon emissions plus 5.3 tons of emissions for the battery. For an electric car with a large 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, we add 17.5 metric tons for the battery. So here we can clearly see that producing an electric car requires more emissions. Now it's time to get into vehicle use emissions. 
Thankfully, there are wonderful data resources on vehicle emissions, as this is something that is heavily regulated. So on every single vehicle Monroney, you'll see the emissions the vehicle produces. The US Department of Energy summarizes this data, and you can see that the average gasoline vehicle in the United States creates 11,435 pounds, or about 5.2 metric tons, of CO2 emissions each year. This is while driving the national average of about 12,000 miles, or about 19,300 kilometers per year. That's an average commute of about 33 miles per day, which is well within the capability of any modern electric car. This is something you can verify looking at a vehicle Monroney sticker. Take this pickup truck as an example. It produces 528 grams of CO2 per mile. Multiply that by the average annual mileage, and you get 6.24 metric tons of CO2 per year, about 20% higher than the average US vehicle, which is at 5.2 metric tons per year. The Alternative Fuels Data Center also provides us with emissions for electric vehicles, and this is specifically based on the electric mix that provide charging for the electric vehicle. So a state like West Virginia, which is heavily coal dependent, will have much different numbers than a state like Idaho, which is heavily hydroelectric dependent. Looking at national averages, we can get a good idea of electric cars as a whole, which produce about 4,455 pounds of CO2 emissions each year, or about 2 metric tons. Now here comes the fun part where we can start making conclusions based on this data. If we take the amount of carbon for gasoline vehicle production and add to that the amount of annual emissions multiplied by T for time and set this equal to the amount of carbon for electric vehicle production and add to that the amount of annual emissions also multiplied by T, then by solving for T we get the exact number of years required in order for an electric car to have less lifetime emissions than a gasoline car. Putting in the numbers for the average gasoline vehicle in the United States against the average 30 kilowatt hour battery electric car using the average energy mix, we find out that after just 1.67 years, an electric car is already producing less emissions than its gasoline competitor, with many, many years of useful life to come. In fact, even if you had to replace the battery, meaning you had the additional carbon of that second battery's production, you'd still break even in less than three and a half years. And clearly batteries are going to last far longer than a couple years because manufacturers are providing 8 year 100,000 mile warranties with them. Now the story isn't quite as clean once you start getting into the higher capacity batteries. So doing the same car comparison with a 100 kilowatt hour battery versus the average gasoline car results in 5.5 years needed to offset the carbon production. But 5.5 years is still way less than an electric car's useful life. Remember, these cars have very few moving parts and they require much less preventative maintenance than gasoline cars. And again, these are using conservative estimates for the carbon emissions related to battery production. If we go with more lenient estimates, a 30 kilowatt hour electric car could offset its emissions in less than four months, and a 100 kilowatt hour electric car in less than two years. Going back to national averages with conservative estimates, it's also important to see where your power comes from. For example, I live in the state of Idaho, where a small electric battery will be offset in just 1.1 years and a larger electric car in just 3.6 years. If the majority of the state's energy comes from coal, however, like in West Virginia, a small EV takes 5.4 years, and a larger one takes as much as 17.8 years. So if you're driving a Tesla P100D in West Virginia, you're not doing the environment any favors. But you probably didn't have the environment in mind anyways when you were buying a crazy fast $135,000 sports sedan. Even using more generous carbon emissions numbers, it would take 6.1 years for a 100 kilowatt our electric car in West Virginia to produce less emissions than the average gasoline car. A smaller battery, however, would only take one year. So driving a car like the LEAF, even in a coal-powered state, is still better for the environment than a gasoline car. In fact, there isn't a single state in the US in which driving a purely gasoline-powered car is the greenest option. But likewise, driving an electric car isn't the best option in every state either, only in about half of the states. In the other half, it's better to drive a plug-in hybrid or a hybrid vehicle, which have smaller batteries and thus have less emissions. But as electricity production becomes greener in other areas, which it tends to do, an electric car becomes the best option. 
Now these numbers bring up an interesting revelation because I had always thought it would be better to continue driving your old car rather than purchasing a new cleaner car because you don't have the emissions related with producing that car. But it turns out the numbers show otherwise. Numbers show the vast majority of automotive emissions come from vehicle use in gasoline cars, not from production. If you were to buy a brand new small battery electric car, from an emission standpoint, the new car will be in the green in less than five years. So if you take two people and both of them are driving the same old gasoline car and one of them sells today and buys an electric car and the other continues driving the older car, in just five years, the electric car will be the greener option of those two scenarios. Now, I don't want this to imply that we should all be buying new cars all the time. Obviously, this isn't green. And when thinking about cars, obviously using a 3,000 pound object to transport, you know, 150 pound object is not the most efficient or green way of doing so. Riding your bike or walking is going to be a much greener option. But we are comparing between an electric car and a gasoline car. And so it's a myth to say between that comparison that an electric car is worse for the environment than a gasoline car. Okay, so we've talked about emissions, but I do want to briefly touch on lithium mining because this is something that's often brought up when deeming electric cars not environmentally friendly in comparison to gasoline cars. So there's several things here. First of all, lithium makes up far less of an electric car's battery than you might think, only about 5 to 7%. It's latched onto because it's in the name, you know, lithium ion battery. Uh, but in reality, there are elements like cobalt and nickel, which are actually more important. And these elements are also more profitable to recycle, which I've explained in a previous video talking about recycling electric car batteries. But is lithium mining horrible for the environment? So one of the interesting things about choosing to attack lithium as a way to say that electric cars are bad for the environment is that lithium is extracted in extraordinarily desolate places like the Atacama Desert in Chile, which is one of the world's leading producers of lithium. So lithium is extracted from a brine beneath desert salt flats and then brought to the surface where you then evaporate off that water and you're left behind with this liquid goo of lithium and other components that you can further refine down to the lithium. And so it is a very water intensive process and that is an environmental consequence of mining for lithium. But from an ecological standpoint, this happens in an area where hardly any life forms could actually survive. Drilling for oil for gasoline powered cars, on the other hand, often happens in more biodiverse and more ecologically fragile ecosystems, such as ocean floors or the tar sands in Canada, in addition to you know, the more desolate areas like in Saudi Arabia, where the environmental impacts may not be quite as apparent. And again, I think it's worth repeating that I'm not saying that mining for lithium is good for the planet. It's just untrue to say that mining for lithium is worse than drilling for oil and taking large amounts of carbon out of the ground and placing it into the atmosphere. Now, on the subject of electric cars and getting more into Formula E, Formula E acts as a testbed for many auto manufacturers which have been joining in, including Nissan for the start of the fifth season, where car swaps have been eliminated and one car is used for the full race. Each car gets just one battery which has to last the full season and there have only been two battery failures in racing over the first four seasons, which is pretty impressive when you compare this to how frequently other motorsports are replacing engines. They also produce the energy for charging the cars using glycerin generators for their clean emissions and they track their environmental impact and how well they're improving it on their website which is interesting to see a breakdown of. It's also part of their goal to be bringing Formula E to cities to help draw attention to how air quality can be improved in urban areas by using electric cars. Overall the main takeaway from this video which I think is pretty intuitive from the beginning is that electric cars certainly aren't any worse for the environment than gasoline powered cars regardless of where your energy comes from to charge that electric car and in the vast majority of cases they're environmentally superior to gasoline cars. So thank you all so much for watching and if you have any questions or comments of course feel free to leave those below.